What's up YouTube, Defragon here. Today I'm going to be bringing you something special, it's going to be in-game footage of the Diablo 3 beta as uh, a max level, which is level 13 in the beta, Demon Hunter. Um, if you want me to uh, go through the other classes in the game, I uh, just leave a description in the below, or leave a description below, and uh, if enough people ask for it, then I'll do a video on that class as well. Here's my other characters, which is my monk, witch doctor, Barbarian, Wizard, and the Demon Hunter. Alright, well I'm going to show you a playthrough of the entire beta, probably in two parts, because it's going to be a little long. And, uh, select the beginning quest, and let's get into it. There will be portions which I stop talking for a period of time, either because there's nothing really to talk about at that moment, because I kind of want to uh, talk about it as it happens. And plus, uh, I want you to kind of feel how the game is, how it sounds, and I don't know. Best to kind of have that done through hearing the background noises. I have journeyed here to find the fallen star and purge its evil from this land. It fell on the old cathedral. There was only one survivor, Leah. You should speak with her. Captain Rumford, more dead are coming. We can't open the gates until we drive them back. The move I'm using right now is called a uh, entanglement shot. It hits uh, up to two enemies, and it snares them as well. And one really cool effect is uh, if the enemy actually lives through it, it'll connect uh, a chain from him and to any other person that it hits. And, I don't know, it's kind of a cool effect. This is the new town of, or this is New Tristram. And as the other Diablo games take place around the town of Tristram, this one does as well. Rumford said that you survived the Fallen Star's impact. I did. But it blasted my uncle, Deckard Cain, into the depths of the old cathedral. I tried to search for him, but the dead were already rising. I came back here to rally the militia, but... Th Watch out! The wounded are turning! That is rapid fire. This is killing business. I'll explain that move here in a second. The dead will overwhelm us all, unless something is done. Then I shall put an end to them and secure your town. Thank you. You should speak with Captain Rumford at the gate. He can tell you what to do. I think I'm going to, uh, in, for the sake of shortening this video as much as possible, I'm going to skip through the, uh, the next, all the to come talking, just to, uh, speed things up a little bit. What can I do to help fight the risk? I Don't worry. Well, I They're attacking the barricades! But, uh, this move that I'm using is called Rapid Fire. It uses hatred. And basically, a, uh, a demon hunter has two things that they use. And like how a mage has mana, well, demon hunters have hatred and discipline. Um, basically, you have a set of moves that you can pick one from, or multiple from, just depends on what you want to use. But uh, you have a set of moves that you can pick from that generate hatred. You have a set of moves that you can pick from that use hatred. And you have a set of moves you can pick from that use discipline. Now, uh... All moves that use hatred are pretty much damage dealers, from what I can tell. And everything that uses uh, discipline is more of a support. Like, uh, it can be evasive or it can be uh, buffs. And out of all the classes so far, Demon Hunter is by far my favorite. Second would have to be Monk. I will say the hardest that I uh, the hardest one that I had time leveling would be the uh, witch doctor. They start out really weak. Um, later on, they got pretty good and they got to where they hit pretty hard. But uh, I don't know. I just like the way that old demon hunter plays. It's just something about it. You made an awfully odd noise. All of these chests are empty. 
The golden surrounded uh, mobs like you just saw there are elites. And they typically drop blues, magical items. Also, the uh, mobs outlined in blue are considered elites as well. And usually if you kill a pack of them, then the last one you kill will drop a magical item. My hatred is too low. This is a uh, pretty much a little teleport pad that lets you go to previous ones that you've already found. Speed things up Thank a bit. Thank you for your help, but no should. Come, let us search for your uncle. We'll need to. This character right here is, uh, she's new to the series, the but her uncle, which is the person you're searching for right now, has been in, uh, all the previous Diablos, Diablo 1, 2, and 3. Uncle Deckard, what she just said. I'm told he was a great boy but, um, who was lost when Tristram fell to the demons. He's one of the, uh, main characters that has been in all the Diablos. Look, a hidden cellar. Follow me. And right now we're trying to uh, find him. He was, if you watched the, uh, if you've watched the cinematic, um, I think it's the opening cinematic, where the meteor crashes into the, uh, the church, or the cathedral. The key and my mother's. I will go. Thank you. And uh, the old man gets knocked through the floor. Well, that was Uncle Deckard, and basically this is picking up where that left off. And right now you're searching for him. One thing that I've always loved about Diablo is the randomly generated dungeons, and uh, so many dead. See, like this little hole right here, and sometimes that I've played through it or through this, the, you'll be able to go down that. It will be con uh, called like a mass grave, and you'll be able to go down there and uh, loot some bodies. But as you can see in this playthrough, it's not like that. It changes every time you play through it. The dungeons are different every time you go through them. It's not going to be the same pattern dungeon every time you go through it. Close to the fallen star now. It keeps the replay value very, very high. And right here is the cathedral that the comet smashed into in the cinematic. Which I didn't really know any of this until I went back and I rewatched the uh, opening cinematic. So this is where the star fell. One thing that's cool is you can react with your environment to uh, use to your advantage, like I just used that chandelier to crash down on that group of enemies. Also, if you get enough kills in a row, or within a certain amount of seconds, you get a nice bonus amount to your XP. Like that. Now since these dungeons are randomly generated, even though I've beat this uh, beta a countless amount of times, I have absolutely no idea where I'm going. I can just hope that I'm going in the right direction towards where I need to go. My hatred is too betrays you. And just kill everything that gets in my way until I find it. Another elite, and I hate that some of the elites. Whenever you finish, uh, whenever you kill them, they uh, they blow up and they freeze you for a couple of seconds. Well, I've been that way. Let's see here. Yeah. Also, um, something that I like, or well, another day then, but um, something that at least I think is uh, 
well, true is the fact that I think the Demon Hunter in the beta is the most powerful class that you can play as in the beta. Simply because the best gear you can get is the gear that you can craft from the blacksmith. And at the blacksmith, since the max level is 13, there are two rare, which is the gold colored items. Uh, one-handed crossbows that you can craft and they do massive amounts of damage and because of that there isn't any rare items that you can craft for the other classes to give them that uh, damage boost so for that I think that the demon hunter does the most damage in the beta right now I'm having a little bit of a lag which reminds me that uh, a reason why I I don't really understand completely is that even though you're playing by yourself in solo um, campaign your latency is still affected by your internet even though you're not online your internet connection still affects your gameplay which is kind of uh, kind of annoying but uh, here we go Oh, and here is Michael Decker. Stay back. Back. Maybe sweat. The skeleton king. The power of the fallen star awakened me. And soon all will suffer as I have suffered. Gods, bring me his bones. <laughs> go down here and help out the elderly. Hey! I'm here to rescue you! Back to your grave! Oh, thank you. Leah, Arthur. It is wonderful to hear that Leah is well. I fear the worst. I learned of this secret passage through all we must discuss the fallen star. Follow me to trip. Uncle, you're alive! Thanks to I have, but not much. Please, Uncle. The skeleton king we lost. A tragic story. The key. Right now, I'm going to uh, talk to the blacksmith. Basically, he's been uh, grouping up people that are sick and putting them in his basement and his wife got infected and he asks you to go help him on killing them including his wife after you do this for him he becomes your pretty much personal blacksmith and you can use him to craft all kinds of different weapons and armor I'm sorry sorrow won't save your And there's his wife. My love, forgive me. Ah, Hedrick, help me. I couldn't have done this with. There's one thing I can help you there. You'll find his tomb in a cemetery in the Weeping Hollow. And if you see my fool apprentice out there, you can use the blacksmith to also to uh, salvage magical items instead of vendoring them. This helps free up bag space, and it's more useful to uh, salvage items because you can use the items you get from salvaging them to craft better Stand items. That's the last of them. The bridge is clear. And you can use spin cash to uh, upgrade the shop so that you can craft more items. You can also repair your gear there as your gear does break over time. I really hate those elites. I 
As you can Sweet see, that track. rapid fire just destroys everything. Just to switch things up a bit, I'll go over some of the other moves that you can use. I'll get rid of my entangling shot for uh, grenades. This is a kind of interesting move. I'll show you what it does as soon as it gets off the cooldown. You have to wait uh, a couple of seconds before you can use a newly equipped move. Not ready yet. This move is uh, pretty much perfect for big groups. But uh, this area, this is the Cemetery of the Forsaken. Now, something cool about this area that kind of goes along with the random generated, uh, just the RNG of this game, is there's three crypts in this entire cemetery that will be open for you to be able to walk in. But in total, there's about maybe five crypts. But not all of them are always open. Only three at a time. One of the crypts is just a crypt... You go, in, uh, you go in there, and you go out, there's nothing really special. One of the crypts has a special event in it that is going to be uh, a quest. Um, one is either you help this ghost out, this lady ghost, in uh, recovering her bones, or the other one is a uh, jar of souls in it, which you have to... Uh, Basically, you find a jar in the middle of the room, you click on it, and hordes and hordes of zombies come. After you kill them all off, you click on this uh, jar, and it blows up, and you get some items from it. And it's, uh, you can only have one event at a time, you can't have both in a playthrough. And the next crip is the one that you're intended to go into to get retrieve the crown of the, uh, the Skeleton King. In order to place the crown on his head so you can revive him and kill him and concentrate. Here's the grenade move that I was talking about. Basically, you throw out three grenades at a time. All of them are up, hitting everything around them. And this one does generate hatred, so you can spam this. But when it comes to uh, moves like that, I prefer moves that uh, are more controllable. This is a... Uh, Bandit. They have different names, like some of them are called pygmies and imps. But uh, basically, you hit them until they they just constantly drop goodies for you. And once you kill them, they drop a couple of blues. Going to switch to another move here is uh, the move you start with is Hungering Arrow. Basically, it's a magical arrow that hits multiple targets. Sometimes it hits multiple targets, sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of bounces wherever it wants to go. Waiting. You have to wait on it to get off cooldown before you can actually see what it does. Well, Let's see here. here. Well, this is the end of this crypt, so this was the one that was, you know, you just go into and get out. Alright, I already checked the crypt over there that's usually open and uh, there was nothing special there. So there should be two more crypts down here. One over there and one over here. Let's try this one first. There's Hungry Nero. As you can see, it, it does hit multiple targets. It kind of bounces off walls and makes its way towards enemies. And here's a, uh, a Seeker. There's another one of those. And these guys are going to push with this. I kind of want to kill him before he opens his portal and runs away. Like that. And I got him just in time. And here's the event. This is the Lady Ghost event. Grave robbers have defeat. Basically, she wants you to retrieve her bones and put her body at rest. I'm just gonna kind of uh, 
add to this a little bit, see if it'll help me get a really big uh, massacre spree going on, get these skeletons building up. So I'll just use all three of these at a time instead of individually. Something you definitely don't want to do on the harder difficulties. All right, now that these guys are gathered up. My hatred is too low. Seems like all of them. 38 monsters killed. 330 XP boost. It's quite a nice bonus if experience benefited me. <coughs> and there's all kinds of goodies. Then right over here is the uh, little quick exit. I'm going to switch the primary move again. This time to evasive fire. This one's really neat. Just I would be using this one, but right now it's glitched in the beta. It has a little bit of a problem to it, and I'll show you what that is whenever I get to using it. Yeah, that just leaves this crypt, and this is the right one. I'm still waiting. And this is a vase of fire. Basically, it turns your crossbow into what sounds like a gun, but every time an enemy gets close to you and you fire it, it'll cause your character to do a backflip to keep your character out of range. Which I find really cool. But every time you do do a backflip, it causes you to uh, use discipline. As you can see, the little blue bar right here going down whenever I use it and do a backflip. Something you can get is, uh, later on you can get a passive ability that every time you do a backflip from invasive fire, it'll give you a 60% movement speed. Which is, uh, pretty cool, especially when you want to get around really quickly. gonna change here to a uh, bolo shot which is a pretty uh, another pretty cool move not enough hatred kind of wandering around due to the uh, randomly generated dungeons. I have no idea where I'm going even though I've went through this, I'd have to say, hundreds of times already. This is Bolo Shot. Basically, it does what it says. It shoots a Bolo onto the target, but it, it blows up after a couple of seconds and does uh, AoE damage. It's a really cool move, but, I mean, I like more controlled moves. I mean, it, this couple of seconds that it takes to actually blow up and do damage kind of irritates me. So I just stick with evasive, or entanglement shot. I have a feeling that the crown is nearby. Right here we get to fight a little bit of a big guy, but, uh, for my level he's not going to be anything. I really like his entrance, you'll see whenever I step up here. Just, uh, just listen. Pretty cool entrance, I thought. But here's a, uh, another shot called Impale. It's a really hard-hitting attack. You'll see me hit hundreds, fifteens, nineteens, hundred and six. See, uh, just three shots is all it took. Well, my other moves hit around forties and fifties. That one's hitting over hundreds. The car is by far one of my favorites for taking out big groups of enemy really quickly. I'll show you a real quick buff of mine. 
that uses this one's shadow power increases my attack speed. Watch this. And I especially love the effect that it gives you, which is the like uh, the shadow-like Tyrael wings. Now I'm going to use the town portal to go back after I have this round to turn in the quest. There it is. You found the crown. Ah. Also, I'll show you the salvage ability. You just click on the anvil, salvage there. all the blue items that I have. Use the day it was placed upon the Black King's head. I need something more than making spades to occupy my And mind. it gives you Soto Essence and Fallen Tooth. Of course, there's other materials, but in the beta, there's only about three. I think there's a plank you can get it to. <coughs> but I have, the, uh, I have the maxed out version of the blacksmith in the beta. Like, uh, I can't buy, or I can't train him anymore because in order to, I'd have to have these five pages. And those are not in the beta. How might I use the crown to read when he is... Also is the stash. Something cool about this is you can put items in the stash, and it shares those throughout all your characters. So every one of my characters can get on here and see these items, which I've also bought quite a few slots in the stash box. And I've bought a second tab and started working on it, and I'll go ahead and buy another 14 slots since there's really nothing for me to spend the rest of my money towards. And continuing on with the quest. This is the uh, last quest of the game, actually. And the longest part. are pretty much summoners. The glowing purple ones, they like to summon a bunch of little skeletons around them and pop out of walls. They are great magicians. I see some elites down here. Always fun to kill those. But I I cannot wait to try out the harder difficulties. Normal for Diablo is pretty much just a farming difficulty so you can grab some gear to survive in the later difficulties. Because in the later difficulties, they guarantee you that you will die. And that's something that I find really interesting. Because I really like a challenge. Also, um, the, uh, the difficulty scales with however many people are playing in your party. So if I had... Two or three people join my party right now, the difficulty would automatically scale up. Wouldn't have to restart the game or anything if they just joined right now. If my party settings were set for people to join, and they did, the difficulty would scale. If someone left afterwards, later on in the game, then the difficulty would scale back down to uh, make up for the loss of party members. I found that really, uh, that smart system really neat. Tell me, what brought you to this infernal place? I will place? say I must that uh, skeleton Down this after way. pretty much there 10 years since Diablo 2, this game is. Uh, I am Cormac. This Body game meets my expectations and a little bit more from just what I've seen in the beta. 
Then you will have to fight your way past the dark tower. There is no reason we should hunt alone. I usually prefer to be alone, but I will make an exception for the one. This guy right here is your companion that you uh, say he's a template later on in the game, but uh, you do acquire new companions you can use, but in the beta you're only limited to him. I'm just going to kind of leave him and let him do his own little thing. Oh, well, there he is. Black magic bars our way, but the will of a Templar is stronger. The will of a Templar is stronger. You were a Templar, John. Pop my wings. Sound like a paladin. Not enough hatred. And I always do hate fighting this guy because he can't seem to stand still. Please forgive me. My vision was clouded by the Coven's evil magic. Betrayal can never be forgiven. Never forget. Thank you oh. for your aid. Something that I seem to uh, forgotten to mention about the evasive fire, the bug in it right now in the beta is uh, if you're standing like this close to an object and you're back to it and backflip and you hit that object, sometimes it'll lock your character up and you won't be able to move or attack for uh, quite a few seconds and it leaves things to be able to just wail on you and possibly kill you. I don't know if that's going to be an issue in the final release. Hopefully not. I'm sure that they fixed it by now. But uh, just thought I would address that. The that is the reason why I'm not using that particular move. What foul sorcery is this? And now I got four directions to pick from. I'm gonna go with this one. to me I've chosen the wrong path. So back we go. Mm, let's go up this time. Wonderful, another big crossroad. Ah, here we go. Oh, I got lucky. This is the last level or floor of the cathedral. These little things are shrines that give you bonuses to either experience, gold find, magic find, uh, attack damage, attack speed, stuff like that. <coughs> Keep your and uh, excuse the coughing, I've had a little bit of a cold there. lately. I apologize for that. The skeleton King. Who reminds me so much of the Lich King.
here is the boss fight. the skeleton king. Upon placing the crown on his head, he comes to life. I'm going to use my little attack speed buff here. Rapid fire for lots of numbers. Lots of numbers. Typically, this fight would last a lot longer. It's too long. I'm gonna float up in there now and then blow. And as you can see from the uh, big giant white words on the screen, that uh, I have defeated the beta. Oh, this is the Dogville 3 beta as the a demon hunter. Um, I hope you enjoyed these two videos I'm sure maybe it'll end up being more parts I don't know I haven't put them on YouTube yet but thanks for watching uh, please look forward to seeing more um, especially whenever Diablo 3 comes out expect to see a lot of Diablo 3 gameplay but again thanks for watching please don't forget to like favorite and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video